Hello, thanks for watching. Uh, in this video, I'll break down settings for Repetier for a DaVinci 1.0 printer running Repetier version 0 0.92. Um, these settings will be a combination of, you know, speed and high quality. Like when I say high quality, if you're just coming from default XYZ, you know, crapware, you're going to be just amazed at how well these come out. And only pr print, uh, well, no, how about new? It'll print maybe a bit slower in some situations and faster in others, but uh, it'll print much, much nicer every single time. So let's just get to the settings. Yeah, sorry about the printer noise. I'm sure you can hear that. It's kind of just like... Sounds like a crashing airplane sometimes. It makes squeaking noises. I'll show that in another video and how to fix that. But anyways, where are we? Alright, so... Layers and perimeters. Layer height, 0.2. Uh, gives you a nice, very smooth finish. Um, first layer height, 0.3. You want to do that just so it sticks to the bed a bit better. Um, nothing much to say on that. Just leave this at 2. It's basically default. Most printers do it. There's not too many like situations where you want to change that. Uh, top 3, bottom 2, you can change this. Change this. Uh, I... Oh, thank you, airplane. Uh, anyways, it doesn't really matter to me. So I'll leave it at that, and leave these like that, nothing to break down there. Infill 10%, totally up to you, you can set it to hollow if you want, you can set it to 5, 15, whatever. Honeycomb, basically what you're going to want to use in most situations, pretty efficient and pretty strong. Um, yeah, just leave this as rectilinear, yeah, that's all there is to say about that. Mm, these are basically default. All right, the speeds. Perimeters, 40 millimeters a second. Um, you might have seen my other video, but that was basically a 40 millimeter a second perimeter. Um, it's a, not exactly slow. Like if if there's a slow, medium, and fast, it's like a medium fast maybe. Um, but it does come out looking nice. Small perimeter, 70 percent. External perimeter, 70 percent. Um, leave it at that. It's still pretty fast, but in certain situations you want to go a bit slower than 40 or else you're going to have messed up looking parts. Infill 60 millimeters a second. That's actually pretty fast. If you haven't seen my other video, you're going to want to look at it. Um, it's just insane. Like It flies over the infill. doesn't waste any time there. Solid infill. 75%. A bit slower, just uh, just in case for instance, you're trying to print something solid in certain areas, and if you do it fast, it might warp or it might bulge or do something weird and make your part look funny, which, of course, you don't want to do. All right. Top solid and fill, same thing, except slower because you definitely don't want bulging at the top. Support material, 20 millimeters a second. This is slow. Um... I do it slow for a reason. Uh, if you don't do it slow, you're gonna have, you might have issues. There's a big maybe here. Um, basically, the supports they're usually thin. There might be, it might be like two millimeters by four millimeters or even less, you know. And I'm not sure if you've ever had this happen to you, but let's say your printer misprints. It prints into the air. You know, it just lets a strand of filament, or yeah, filament into the air, and then it'll just ruin your whole print. I do support material slow, just because that's one of the easiest things for your printer to mess up. It can go faster, like for instance, uh, 30 is faster, and it's still pretty decent. Uh, it's you know a little bit less safe, but not many people are freakish when it comes to supports like I am. Um, 
30 or 40 will probably get you by just fine. Uh, support material interface, 75%. You want to slow it down because um, when it's interfacing with, let's say, your main part, you want it to print nice and slow so that it doesn't damage your part. You don't want any unnecessary connections or misprints or anything like that. Bridges and gap fill, I honestly have no clue what those are. I've never seen a print bridges or gap fill. So uh, I said it really slow, whatever. I mean, if I pay attention, maybe I'll see it barely moving when it's printing and I don't know if it's a bridge or a gap. Travel 175, this is insane travel. Um, you probably don't want to do it because it does put stress on your printer that you know is unnecessary. Something like 130, still pretty zippy and not as dangerous. First layer speed 50%. Gonna want it. Well, that's actually a bit fast. Um, Twenty or thirty percent is safe. Nice and slow, so that that first layer, the all important first layer, is done correctly. If your first layer messes up, messes up your print. <sighs> if you print too fast, it might warp. And then it'll print the first twenty or thirty layers fine, and then you realize that your part's not coming out right, and then that's some wasted filament. Uh, so twenty, thirty, maybe forty percent, fifty percent. If you have a perfectly aligned or a perfectly calibrated bed, which I do, and um, you know how your printer works. Oh, that brings me back to travel. You can set it higher if you. Uh, if you're familiar with maintaining your printer, such as tightening your belts, tightening or torquing, you know, rivets and nuts and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> rivets, whatever. All right, nothing left in speed. Yeah, just leave that all at zero, and you're good. Skirt and brim. Uh, one loop for the skirt. Don't really need two. It's pointless. You just want the skirt just to show that your printer is printing correctly. For instance, if it starts to print a skirt and the skirt's lifting off the bed, you know that you're about to have a nice warped piece. So you cancel your print. Distance from object, uh, this doesn't really matter. I set it to six just because I sometimes print multiple parts on one uh, on one bed at the same time. Skirt height, <clears throat> skirt height one millimeter, or one layer, sorry. Don't really need to do two, pointless. Uh, extrusion length, I don't think it matters, just set it to 10. Brim, 2 millimeters. You're going to want to do brim, especially if you're using supports. Um, we still have rafts to talk about, but we'll put that on hold for a minute. You're going to want to do brim um, just because it supports the supports. You put on brim and it'll stop supports from peeling off easily within the first couple of layers of printing, you know, um, which of course ruins your whole print. Brim's also just good in general for most parts, especially thin ones. So you want to set this anywhere from 2 to 6, depending on what kind of part you're printing. Um, most of my stuff, I only need 2, honestly. Support material, um, this is, of course, if you want support material. Like, for instance, here I have support material. As you can see, two millimeters of of uh, brim, and then there's a raft right there. We'll talk about that in a bit. And then just massive, nasty-ass support shit going on there. Anyways, um, overhang 30. Let me show you what that looks like when it comes to slicer. Looks something like that. 30 is pretty much uh, the limit of what your printer cannot print without support, so that's what you want to set it to. Some people do 45 with mixed results. Uh, 30 is pretty safe. All right, and for support, for, for zero layers, whatever. RAF layers, um, this one varies. Some people don't need a raft. I do 
use rafts. I use rafts every single time for a couple reasons. One, uh, it can give you a nicer, well, depending on, yeah. Sometimes it can give you a nicer, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, plain edge surface, whatever, um, on your part because you can peel the rafts off, which is pretty cool. I didn't know that going in. I'm new to 3D printing, but yeah. So rafts gives your print support, as you probably could figure out. Um, gives it support, helps it stick to the table. What the heck? Stick to the table, the bed, sorry. And um, it's also kind of like, how do I call it? kind of like a canary in a mine shaft. The rash will fail before your print fails, you know? So it does take a bit to print a raft, so I would say set it to one, unless you're doing some specific thing that needs to. Um, it'll print the raft, and if you see the raft starting to peel, you know, you're going to want to cancel the print, clean your bed, start over. Anyways, rectilinear, normal 2.5 millimeter. Depends on what you want to do. Like for instance, um, let me show you. That's 2.5. Some people might consider that a bit dense. Uh, honestly, it might be. It might be a bit unnecessary for it to be that dense, just for some sh crap that's you know going to the top just to support it. You know. Um, I'd say anywhere from 2.5 to 5, depending on what you're doing. Interface layer, layers 2, don't really need more than that. Less than that can kind of be a pain in the ass, you know. Other than that, there's not much in this, uh, not much here. First layer, 200%, whatever the heck that is, whatever. Filament settings, um... Of course, it's 1.75 for the diameter, and the extrusion multiplier will be 0 0.91. Oh, yes, bed temperatures. Depends on what you want to do. Um, 220 to 230 works wonders. Um, like, if you're coming from a default DaVinci, you're going to just be like, wow. <laughs> it's as if, like, it at first it was like printing, you know, like Play Doh or something coming out of a little, you know, the little press things that they used to come in. And this is like someone took clay and sculpted something out of it. It comes out very, very nice. You want to set your bed temperature higher, like 100 to 105, maybe 90. If you're uncomfortable with that, you know. Um, let's see. 105, the first layer, works. It helps. Uh, it definitely does help with the sticking to the bed. Assuming you're using a glue stick, of course, which you probably should be. And 100 for everything else is fine, too. Cooling. Uh, did I touch cooling? I can't remember. Yeah, it should be the same. Anyways, printer settings. Z offset. Mm, I'll just leave that alone because that doesn't really matter. It's That just depends completely on your printer. Like, for instance, if your printer is... If you're having trouble leveling the bed, like there's too much of a gap, but the gap is uniform all around you can simply set this to a negative little number and it'll decrease the gap between the extruder and the bed. G-code flavor, rep wrap, of course. Extruder is 1, vibration limit 0 megahertz. I haven't changed that. Custom G-code should, I believe this is default. Yeah, I believe that's default. All right, nozzle diameter, 0 0.4. Retraction length, 1.5. Um, you definitely do want to retract because if not, it'll kind of spider web between travels. So uh, 
15 millimeters a second of speed and yeah all right no oh I mean yes whatever all right so basically here's where you connect to your printer. I'll show you that. Probably should have shown you that first. Um, when you're trying to connect your printer to Repetier, you might have an issue where you have to mash OK repeatedly for it to do anything. These are the, the settings that you use for um, just general connection with the USB cable. The COM port changes. If you've gotten this far, you know what a COM port is. So set it to your COM port, set it to the baud rate that's shown on the printer in settings or around settings, you know. Repetier protocol, do, do a whatever, native USB port. Set emergency, command and reconnect. And 202, make sure it's 202. Ping pong communication isn't uh, necessary, but I use it just in case the printer starts uh, acting weird sometimes. It's kind of just like a, hey, print this, print this section. Okay, I printed this section, and then it sends the next section kind of thing. Uh, this stuff doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show it to you just in case. Max extruder temperature 240, max bed temperature 120. Keep it like this just in case there's a run runaway uh, thing going on. All right, bed shape. Classic printer, min, min, min. 00, 200, 200, 00. 200, 200, 200. There should be something somewhere for Ah, uh, yes, down here. You need to k check these boxes because it makes it much easier to use the manual control, which you might occasionally. Um, if you don't check these boxes, you have to hit this to make the bed go down, and it's just counterintuitive. Other than that, that's it, I believe. Um, you can modify the settings to make it a bit faster. Right now, I print medium speed I would say. This is medium speed and it prints just magnificently. Yep, so thanks for watching. Uh, happy printing.